Hi, Sam Spinat here for The Informer. Today on Property Matters, we're continuing our talk of building your team. And I'm joined today by Jeff Suda from Dark Horse Finance to talk about finance brokering, the final piece of your team. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Sam. Mate, you and I have done a lot of work over the years. We've known each other a long time. And one thing that always astounds us is how few people actually get organised. And I think it's something both of us find very frustrating is, you know, you go through the process of talking to them. Have you done this? Have you done that? And very often they'll go, I want to buy something. Well, have you got your finance sorted? No. Yeah. Mate, what is it that you actually can do and what is it that people need to talk to you about? Yeah, sure. I think the main understanding that people need to take away from having a finance broker involved and assisting them through the property process is understanding what a finance broker brings to their, uh, their purchase and their process in itself. So part of that would be understanding that if you just go to your bank, you're only going to see two or three products. A good broker should have access to at least 30 different lenders and multiply that out by two or three products across the lenders. You get a much bigger range of choice. And I think people sometimes get focused on the price, so what's the rate that mm -hmm. the, and what they can borrow. But I think probably the first question to ask is understand your situation and which lender does that marry up with the best? Because each lender has different policy and what works for one person, particularly with contract employment, uh, part-time employment, self-employed people, commission income, those sorts of things, they're really important things to consider. Yeah, look, it's one of those funny things. I always love it when someone goes, you're talking to someone, you say, well, so what's your budget? And they go, oh, well, I put my, my earnings into the calculator on a website and it said I can borrow this much. And that always makes me worry because it doesn't take into account anything really, does it? No, it doesn't. And you might find there's all sorts of different weightings at different lenders. A really good example of that is investment income or income from dividends. Virtually every single lender will have a different treatment. It might be similar from one lender to another, but it will be different and they'll probably have a weighting on it. So you knowing what you put on your tax return isn't necessarily what translates to income for a lender. And that, of course, impacts your borrowing capacity. Exactly. And different types of properties also have different requirements. I mean, we've always talked about the apartments versus units versus houses. Yeah, and sure. some lenders look at certain things differently, don't they? Very much so. I think one of the areas we've seen a big difference lately is around service departments, student accommodation, very difficult to get lending for that. Other lenders will have different cutoffs for apartments at 40, 50 and 60 square metres. Those sorts of things are very different and you do need advice and guidance through that process if you're going to get finance in a manner that's going to be timely for your purchase. And I think that's the important thing you just touched on, the timing of the purchase. I mean, how many times have we dealt with someone who's, we've found the perfect property and you go, well, okay, we need to do this. It's going to auction in a couple of weeks. And they go, but I need to buy subject to finance because I haven't started. And trying to explain to people, well, no, you can't do that. Yeah. I think sometimes people put the horse before the cart and the cart before the horse, don't they? Yeah, they do. And look, I think understanding what your borrowing capacity, and you and I have worked this way with a number of clients, getting that up front and having that inform the search that you do for the right kind of property is just critical so that you don't miss out, waste time, miss opportunities, all of those things that can impact the process negatively. Exactly, or even waste money. I mean, you've got other things, you know, sometimes you need a building inspection, a pest inspection, and if it all falls over because of your finance, you've wasted money on other things because you haven't done your due diligence properly. That's exactly right. I think it's really important early in the process, get an understanding of what your borrowing capacity is, make sure you're comfortable with that amount of money and the repayments that go along with that are inside of your budget. Mm. And then you can move forward with confidence and have a really positive process. And I think that's the key thing when building your team. You know, Everyone also needs to be able to talk to each other. You need to be able to talk to the accountant and the financial planner and vice versa, because yep. you've got to understand what the other goals are. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes there are competing interests and, and certainly real estate agents will have relationships with different finance brokers, probably different property advocates as well. And I think if you've got a team around you that all is working in your best interest and is on the same page and communicates well, that's only going to help you get the best result. Exactly. And one thing we've talked about is also disposal of the property. Do they know what their liabilities are back to the bank if they sell it in a short period of time? 
Yeah, and I think that's where you work out with a broker, what are your short and long-term goals? They're a really critical piece of the process. So understanding if you're going to sell a property early, you don't want a fixed term loan with, with fixed repayments because there's going to be break costs to that. Um, if you're going to be starting a family, that's again going to impact your, your income and you might want to look at some different policies that are available with different lenders. All of those things inform where you go and how to do it. So that short and long-term discussion of goals and, and what's coming up for you in the future is a really important discussion. Yeah, it's, it's a huge topic that no one really, I think, gives enough weight to. It's kind of the, the last port of call for a lot of people and it, it really frustrates me when they're not organised. But things like that can really be detrimental to yep. what they're trying to achieve. They can have a massive impact. Um, if, if you think another child or uh, bringing a child or having another child into a family, it's not going to impact, just impact servicing, it's going to impact income, all of those different things, and also understanding whether the house is a right fit, of course, as well. Um, but that impacts income and that impacts whether or not it's the right lender for you. And we've also seen now with the advent of some of these new ways of financing, like afterpay and whatnot, I don't think people understand how that can impact as well. There are a couple of things that can appear on your bank statements and lenders will absolutely look at your bank statements over a period of six months and depending upon circumstances as self-employed people are finding out through the corona impact, perhaps longer, um, if they find after pay transfers to betting agencies and the like and those sorts of things, um, dishonours on direct debits, they're absolutely going to get flagged and, and they're going to point to character from a lender's perspective and, and perhaps negatively impact your possibility of being approved. Fantastic. I mean, it's such a broad topic. We could talk for hours on it, but I think that snapshot will really help people understand what it is and about the building your team and getting you involved early. I thank you so much for coming on today to discuss these topics. And look, if people are thinking about buying, one of the first ports of call should really be the finance broker. Yeah, 100% agree, Sam. I think it's a really important part of the process and having that team that can all work together. Um, I'm happy to share and help out the, the viewers. Thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Well, this has been another instalment of Property Matters for the Informer and building your team. And really, if you're not building your team from day one, you're probably setting yourself up to fail a little bit. Get yourself organised before you pull the trigger, because that's the best way to have success. I'm Sam Spinat. This has been the Informer. Thank you.